support for Tom's Brain comes from Uber. Get your free £10 credit by using the code UberTomPod. T-O-M-P-O-D. Join now and get your first £10 ride for free. Hello, I'm Phyllis McNabb. You're listening to the Tom's Brain Podcast. And... I feel very fortunate to be able to record this episode. It's been two weeks or thereabouts since my last podcast and a lot has happened in the realm of a lot of nothing happening. I feel like I've been in some sort of holding pattern for the past two weeks and emotionally it's been quite straining I've been crying one second and madly dancing the next but That's just my attitude. It always has been. I always try to turn a negative into a positive. And nowhere was that more apparent than last Saturday. When I had plans to go to a retro video game convention. I've never been to one before. I didn't know what I was going to walk in on. And ultimately, I never found out what I was missing out on. Because I woke up on that Saturday with you. I'm not going to say the word because we've discussed my distaste for the word. So I woke up with an epistaxis and. I wasn't sure whether it was just a tiny one or something that was going to impact my day. And as it turned out, it impacted my day. And ultimately, it ended up being... A slow, like like a tap running, just one slow drop for about ten hours, and this has been the most severe episode that I've had since I was very, very young. And it's made me feel very fragile and very a prisoner of my illness, really, because the whole reason it started was because it was the day after my blood transfusion. These blood transfusions, which I'm not supposed to be having anymore. 
and I wish I weren't because for whatever reason the bags of blood are annihilating my platelet count I think I read one out to you in a previous episode I'm in my bed right now drinking my tea so I'm not gonna get up to find one of these old results but I'm just gonna tell you what happened it started three weeks ago after that transfusion I had a relatively tiny epistaxis and I didn't really think anything of it because I'd been to the cinema with my dad I went to see Taken 3 having never seen any of the Taken films before I felt like I owed my dad a trip that he would enjoy rather than seeing a film that I would enjoy because I've dragged my dad along to see a lot of films that were for my own benefit. (laughs) I don't know what I was thinking. I didn't think that I would be too bored and certainly not it wasn't a boring film and I really enjoyed it and then that evening we split up and I had my usual jaunt into Hotel Chocolat and drank hot chocolate and ate a brownie whatever they have Oh, they've just started doing these gorgeous dark orange chocolate brownies and I got the bus home and just as I was getting off I felt my nose was running so I blew it and it wasn't the nice kind of blowing it wasn't the the nice you know the nice kind of clear thing that one one would expect to see come out of their nose but that didn't last very long and I didn't really think anything of it until last Saturday and I realised there was a pattern I have a transfusion the day after I have another and you know I, I asked to look at my platelet count and they were in the 50s and that's that's not very good. A typical person should have 150. And my blood count was even worse. I've talked about how a typical blood count for me is in the 10, or the, the 100. And this past week, it was 70. It 
We're heading outside. I was so... I don't know whether it was because I was so obsessed with my playlist, but... I didn't feel any of the effects that I usually feel with a regular cat. My body didn't hurt. I... I could feel my heart racing faster than usual. And getting short of breath after walking. But nothing that I haven't ever gone through before. And to be quite honest, to be able to get out again after Saturday's 12 hour marathon of having to hold a tissue to my face. I was relieved just to get out. Now, as I said, my plans were to go to that video game convention. Couldn't do that. So... I... Started up Netflix and... Decided to start a TV show that I'd been wanting to watch but hadn't ever started or really heard much about it. And I started watching Orphan Black from the very beginning. They have the first series, 10 episodes. I got through 8. And it was great. There's something, you know, I, I'm actually glad I had the time to do it. There's a really great TV show from BBC and Canada. <laughs> um, it came up to having another transfusion. You know, obviously I'd lost the blood that had been given, so I needed one less than seven days after my last one, and you know, that's not a lot of time to build up my playlist count again. And I was terrified, emotionally. I just felt very a victim of my illness and you know these past 10 weeks being on this new drug treatment I sort of felt like I was finally going a step in the right direction I felt like I was in control of my own life and I could make plans and I could look forward to the future. So, you know, on Wednesday and Thursday I had my hospital appointments and I was prescribed two bags of blood and I was desperate to be prescribe a transfusion of platelets. It's very rare for me to have one. And I was letting my worrying and negative thoughts get the better of me. Because bad thoughts consume you, you have one and you keep thinking about it and that's all you can think of. 
you know, I've gone through this all my life, and I found very early on ways of dealing, one of which was writing, and I'm quite happy to say that I channeled a lot of my feelings into a new song, and I may or may not read out this, or, so, sorry, sing this song at the writer's meetup. And if I do, I, if I can remember, I'm going to record it. And, but yeah, that's getting ahead of myself. So even just now, like, remembering how I was feeling and talking about my, my bad thoughts, I started to feel very trapped in them again, and I just had to take a moment to pull myself out and remember that I'm very fortunate to be re recording this episode because it's the day after that transfusion and I currently feel fine, feel optimistic. I don't feel like I'm a victim. This is the life that I have. It's the only life. I've got to make the most of it. I can't feel beaten. I've gotten the better of. Just because my mind and my body are in two different places. You know, my mind is all about thinking that it can plan for the future. And my body's just, I don't know what my body's doing. I really don't. This has been quite a setback. My levels, my blood count, my platelets, they've not been like this for years. And I know what you're thinking. Well, is this new treatment exacerbating the problem? I don't think it is. I don't even think I was taking it the right way. I was having my injections the day before my transfusion. So, what I've done after this transfusion is give myself some injections. So, I sort of feel like for the first time I might actually see some results. I really benefit from this. I do. It's my therapy. And it serves to remind me of where I have been and where I'm going and that things aren't as bad as they seem. You know, I've been through much worse. This is minuscule, but I just can't shake the feeling that I'm helpless. I'm just... resigned to live out my life this way, that there is no option, no miracle drug. I am so sorry that this is getting to be a really somber podcast. It's, I, I don't even know, I would just, I want to shake me and say, snap out of it. So what am I going to do to snap out of it? Well, as I said, next week I plan to go to writer's meal. It's my sister's birthday. 
So I'm gonna go out with her and my nephews and my dad and we're gonna go bowling and have a pizza. I really want to get my sister in front of this microphone and talk about something a bit more upbeat and conversational. I really loved that episode that I did with Katie and um, to go from that to this just pains me but you know it's been quite quite a tough week I need to I need to um treat this as my catharsism I need to expel all these dark, negative, backwards thoughts and get back on track. So what's on that track? Well, I seem to remember saying not too long ago that I'd planned to release some writing on Valentine's Day. Obviously, that's not going to happen, because it hasn't been happening. But, moving forward, The Sims 4 comes out for the Mac next Friday, I think, and hopefully I'll be able to download it and start playing it because I haven't played a Sims game since The Sims 2. I hated the look of 3. I don't understand why it was so successful because it looked terrible. And rightly so because a completely different team worked on it. Now The Sims 4 has the people back from the original working on it, and it shows, and it looks great, and hopefully it will play great. I know this because I have a little hobby, and my hobby is watching Let's Play videos on YouTube. If you've never heard of this before, let me care to enlighten you. A Let's Play is a video of somebody playing a video game and commentating on it. Not necessarily... I don't like the focus to be on them. I like the focus to be on the game. So, you know, I'm familiar with these Let's Play commentators who have their faces in the corner. And, uh, no, I don't think that's appropriate. It's, you're supposed to be informing me about the game, not your personal agenda. Go take that somewhere else. So... You know, I enjoy watching the ones that are just purely dedicated to the game. Um, my favourite ones to watch are obviously of Nintendo games, Sega games, and Sims. It's, I haven't managed to find a good Sims 2 Let's Play. Only the one. To be honest, I haven't looked hard enough. But... You know, YouTube is so saturated, it's very hard to find things. You know, I stopped uploading on there. 
and I started uploading on Tumblr. But, you know, that wasn't to any effect. You know, about 40 Tumblr followers. So, you know, at least my YouTube account that had that uh, 100 subscribers. And it's none of which I, I don't. I think I may have interacted with three. <laughs> that was when I was doing my daily video vlogs. I go through these phases and I'm hoping that this podcast isn't a phase. You know, I feel like I've got a platform to inform, enlighten, and in educate. In educate. No, to to educate. And the last one that I'm missing is entertainment. I am not entertaining. I've never pretended to be. I just do what I do to pass my own time. I never think about other people consuming what I put out there. If they do, they do. That's very nice. And I thank you, I thank you. But, selfishly, that's not my priority. You know, growing up, I had my diary. And then, I had my video blogs, and now I feel this is a natural progression. But it's slowed down. You know, I can attribute some of that to my treatment. My mood, my attitude, my general feeling of if I actually have some free time, I don't want to be sat in front of a microphone being very introverted and reminiscent of a rather sucky week. All I want to do is just slap on my face and get out into the real world and pretend that I'm part of normality, whatever that is. I'm so amazed. That without any fanfare, my Starbucks addiction is gone. I went twice in January, and I haven't been so far in February. I may, if I, I can't even imagine, if it gets to March and I haven't been, that'll be the first month. In it was like three years that I haven't been. I can't explain it. That was my hub when I first started getting the bus and going out on my own. It was 2009 or 2008, and you should know it, there was a place called Borders. It was Oh, I can't can't explain it. (laughs) 
I can't explain it, but I can't explain what it meant to me. It felt like I'd found my place. You know, I'd never thought that people just go into a cafe on their own, sit down and drink and pass the time. You know, before I'd always gone out with my mum or my dad and you would only go to those places because it would serve a purpose. You would have a rest after being dragged around shops and you know there was at one point in my life when I did love shopping you know Woolworths H&V WH Smith back when I I consumed CDs and videotapes and blank cassettes and, you know, that was like, I remember those times really fondly, like I'm thinking of the indoor mall, White Rose Shopping Centre, that was When I was 13, that was my favourite place to go, and I only went to like four shops, WH Smith, HMV, Woolworths, and the Discovery Store, which is like gadgets and lava lamps and what what not and would finish it off by getting a Burger King and eating it on the drive home and back then I don't know what it was but the food was like (laughs) it's ridiculous to say but the fast food was so much better than it is now I feel like now they've got a conscience and they're trying to make it healthy and it just, it doesn't taste anywhere near as good as it used to do. I I wouldn't know, to be honest. I, I cannot even think to tell you when the last time I got some takeout chicken nuggets from Burger King were. must have been about 10 years, easily. It's all about pizza now. And I can see it happening. Someday soon, McDonald's and Burger King are going to start doing pizza. And you should listen to me on this because I'm very good at predicting food trends. Case in point, I've had long had a dream <laughs> of a cereal cafe in which you would go to just, and it would have, instead of, imagine it like a pub has a selection of beers, where you would go to the cereal cafe and it would have a selection of cereal. And that has been my dream for years and years and years. And then look what should turn up. But a cereal cafe. And not only that, we're getting one in Leeds. So, I expect to hear about that in the future. But, God, I'm, I'm not even uh, angry that somebody's taken my idea. I'm, like, thankful. Because I would have never had the initiative to launch anything like that. So... You know, cereal's getting to be, like, 
um, prohibited. <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> these places are almost like speakeasies for banned cereal substances because the health commission of whatever they're cracking down on sugar cracking down on crack and that sh- crack is sugar and it's a, a naughty word these days and they don't want it in the cereal well screw you because i'm an owl and i can say what i want you can maybe say what the kids want and should have I'm an adult, and I can decide what I have. And if all I want to eat in a day are three different boxes of cereals and a hot chocolate, then screw you. I can do that. Why does it always take me the exact length of of a podcast to warm up to actually talking? I need... What I need to do is, like, I need to do a pre-podcast, which doesn't have any information on it and just warms up my attitude and my, like, because now I'm much more uplifted and I'm much more vocal and in the mood. And we're just coming to the end. You know, I, I apologise for the beginning. It wasn't ideal to start it so heavy but we got there we got there eventually and i hope you stuck with it i've been thomas mcnab you can contact me at lgb tom email tomsbrain2 at yahoo.co.uk there is a facebook page which you can like Facebook.com forward slash Tom's Brain Pod. I am on Stitcher, a beautiful platform for podcasts. Stitcher.com forward slash podcast forward slash Tom's Brain. And there's also my website, which I never actually pimp out on this. But my website is thomasmcnab.wordpress.com. Until next time, take care. Don't let the negative thoughts overwhelm you. You can look, but don't stare. That is a piece of advice that Lou Paul tweeted to me when I was in hospital a few years ago. I was saying how I was, you know, in the hospital and not too happy. And her music was something that, like, the lyrics just felt inspirational. And, you know, she tweeted back that the darkness of the soul is very tempting to stare at and lose yourself fall into it's very attractive but you should only look you should not stare until next time bye bye